What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today we are finally redoing the Heroes tier list in PvZ Heroes. Let me give you a short introduction of exactly how I am going to be rating them on this tier list. First of all, every hero is viable. You can win with every hero against any hero. Every hero has some really, really good deck. If you want to see what the great decks are for any heroes, just type in the name of the hero, type in Prime Up, and you'll see the hundreds of decks that I've done over the years, including all these uh, different heroes. So every hero is viable. I'm going to be making this tier list in a very harsh way. There are going to be heroes that are going to be down in D, even though they're viable. I'm just going to be sort of basing this on how likely would I be personally to run this hero uh, in a tournament setting, in a highly competitive uh, setting, and what is very much going to come down to is, do does this hero even have one really, really competitive deck or strategy? Having one strategy that is so freaking good that I would run in a tournament will make the hero go way up. If it has several decks and several different strategies that you can use um, for that hero in order to, uh, you know, really win in a competitive setting, that will make it go all the way, all the way, all the way up. It's just going to be how likely are, would, would you be to see, in my opinion, how likely should you be to use this hero uh, in a really highly competitive setting, and uh, let us begin with Green Shadow. Unfortunately, Green Shadow is going to be starting off this tier list in D tier. Again, there are good Green Shadow decks. There's uh, A-Beans, and there's even the uh, Counter Shadow deck that I did very recently on Twitch, uh, and that will be on YouTube uh, either right before or right after this uh, tier list. Again, there are competitive decks with her. At the end of the day, though, Green Shadow is the Mega Grow class and the Smarty class. And the re reason I would almost, unless I had some crazy reason to, almost never run Green Shadow in a tournament is because the Smarty is just done better by Rose and by Citron. Uh, they just do this stuff. The Shrinking Violets and the Brainanas and the Dragons. Rose can ramp to them uh citron can uh you know establish a lot of tempo and then use those cards as a finisher the mega grow of course is done a lot better by captain combustible and by grass knuckles those are going to be the stronger um picks in terms of what the mega grow does which is gatling p which is click p which is uh bonus attacks uh green the, i don't think the smarty you know there's not a lot of things that you really want to be you know, including in your Gatling P and your bonus attacks in terms of the Smarty class and the other way around too. Uh, establishing tempo with your Mega Grow, which is, it is a tempo, you know, an aggressive tempo class. And then trying to finish off with Shrinking Violet, Renata, and Dragon, which are the stars, of course, in the Smarty class. Uh, it's just being, it's just better done by Citron. Very unlikely to run this. Again, there's there's viable decks, but I'm going to be keeping Green Shadow over there in D tier. Solar Flare is a hero that I have actually lowered my opinion of significantly. Um, definitely since I played the tournament. Uh, she has a lot of great decks, but uh, she has a couple of weaknesses in her game. One is a complete lack of ability to deal with Gravestone. She has one of the best supers in the game, uh, but has a little bit of a liability in terms of having weaker superpowers. I'll tell you the other thing with... Um, with solar flares that the solar class is really one of the best classes in the game uh, and you're going to see solar uh, heroes being ranked pretty highly but i just think that the solar class uh the heal decks is better done by really every other <laughs> solar hero more than solar flare solar flare does not have any healing superpowers unlike uh chump cell and wall knight that do also rose can ramp uh, which will definitely use the uh, Solar class and the Cobb Cannons and the Allosaurus and all the things that Solar does really well, uh, can just be done... Um, it's just going to... Rose is going to be able to have, let's say, ramp to those things and also have better finishers like Brinan and Dragon. Obviously, Solar Flare can ramp to again. Solar Flare does have Pine Clones uh, that work really, really well. She's the best Pine Clone hero since she has two different cards that cost zero, uh, both Puff Shroom and Lil Buddy. Uh, but again, those decks rely very, very heavily on Pine Clones. If you don't get the Pine Clone or they have counters to them, they become a lot worse again. It is somewhat competitive i did have some success with her in the tournament i'll be sticking solar flare right into b tier next is wall knight wall knight arguably controls the best classes um in pvc heroes um i would say i would put wall knight in a tier 
uh, because there's really a lot of things you can do. You can go Guardian Package. You can go even a little bit more of an aggro Wall Knight. You can do Ramp. Uh, I, Wall Knight's not going to be up in S tier because the, um, the things that... I'll tell you the two problems with Wall Knight. Wall Knight might even be down in B tier for me. Um, maybe I'll even stick him in B tier. I'll tell you the reason why. is because the Solar class, which is a really, really strong class, it, the two strong, the strongest things that you have are going to be, you know, Heal and Ramp. Ramp with Wall Knight, Wall Knight doesn't have a lot of very good late game cards to ramp to. Of course, as a Solar hero, he has the Cobb Cannon and Allosaurus, but the Guardian class, like, what's the late game card that you're ramping to in terms of Guardian? Like, Picanolith, uh, you know, it, Loco Coco, that's a meme deck, it's very fun, but I would definitely would never see myself running that in a tournament. Walnut Bowling is also a little bit too late and unreliable as a finisher. So, it, he doesn't utilize the ramp as well as other solar heroes that have these devastating uh, late game finishers. Um, uh, you know, let's say like Rose does. The Guardian, okay, so the other thing that, let's say, Wall Knight does have is Heal, you know, in the Solar class. Heal doesn't work very well with Guardian. Guardian is all about establishing tempo, which basically means you're not taking a lot of damage. Heal does want to take damage um, in, in order to heal and start making your Pepper MDs and your... Uh, and your catching mechanics and everything, you know, to really start them going. The only heal card in the Guardian class is Poppin' Poppies, which is very hard to even fit um, into a heal deck. So it's funny that Wall Knight really does run, you know, the two best classes, um, yeah, probably on the plan side, but I, I would say ends up being in B tier because they don't work that great together. Also, his superpowers are also pretty lackluster. Like, every once in a while, Uncrackable will save the game uh, by not taking damage. So this doesn't really give you any kind of tempo on the board. It doesn't, like, press you uh, an advantage when you block at that superpower, make you from going being behind to going ahead in the game. Same thing with, really, all of these. I guess the Geyser's very good with heal. Um, again, also Guardian Package. How is Guardian the Solar class going to benefit Guardian? Uh, you know, Guardian establishes early game tempo, and Solar, you can use, like, Strike Throughs as finishers. We have had some success with that. It just seems like there are better options uh, that come after Guardian, like bonus attacks or, like, Brainanas, like the things that are a little bit more suffocating than just putting some Strike Through cards. Again, he is a very good hero. There's a lot of good Wall Knight decks, but unfortunately, because of the synergy of his class, it's going to be a little bit lower. Uh, Chomzilla, I think, actually has higher competitive value than uh, Wall Knight. Obviously, Chomzilla does have a very big hole in its game uh, and not being able to deal with Gravestones. Uh, but nonetheless, the fat, the, the, the Mega Grow and the Solar I found have worked very well together. There's Onion Rings, which you can go Onion Ring Little Buddy, which is a really good uh, combo with Chomzilla. Um, establishing, I would say, just in terms of a pure heal deck, Chomzilla probably is the best because you can um, just sort of stall, run, click, be, run all your heal package and your cob cans, but then you also have bonus attacks. You have like ways, you know, even Espresso Fiesta can be a competitive card in some situations. You have ways of uh, better finishing off your opponent. Maybe this is a mistake. Maybe these should probably be like. Uh, Maybe even Wall Knight would be higher than Chumsilla. I've just seen, I don't know, I've just seen Chumsilla just uh, have a little bit more of a competitive stake uh, in the game than, than Wall Knight. Superpowers? This doesn't feel right to me. I'm just going with my gut and what my experience has told me. Maybe these two really should be flipped around, that Wall Knight should be here and, and Chumsilla should be flipped around here. Maybe they should be in the same tier. I think for competitive sake, we'll actually put them both in A tier because they're both solid heroes. And they're also the two heroes that work the best with probably the best strategy in plants, period, is Pepper MD. And having Geyser in your kit is going to go a long way. Fine. I promoted Chomsilla to A tier, so nobody is mad at me uh, about... Or sorry, I promoted Wall Knight to A tier. Okay, here's Spidow. Spidow is the uh, Guardian hero, but probably the worst one. He doesn't have good finishers. It's just a problem in Spidow's game. You don't have any bonus attack. You don't have any strike through. You're relying very much on Berry Blast and Shamrock. It's kind of just removal to make your cards hit face. So even though he does, again, control the Guardian class, the Color Bloom doesn't really help very much with that. And also, um, again, he doesn't have finishers. And that's why I would 
I almost never even look at Spadao in a tournament. I'm fortunately, even though Spadao does have some good decks, I'm putting him in D tier. Uh, next is going to be Citron. Citron, I am putting in A tier because of simply just because of Countertron. It is uh, it won me the tournament, uh, and uh, Countertron is a really, really, really good deck, and it should definitely be uh, in everyone's arsenal if you're really trying to win games play competitively. I play Countertron all the time. You start off with your Guardian, and you use your. Uh, your smarty cards as a finisher. I'm going to say smarty and brainy and mix those up. Calm down, guys. Uh, the brainanas and the shrinking violets and even dragons, which sometimes I run, and spring bean and jumping bean. These are cards that are, work really, really well after you establish dominance with early game tempo with Guardian. Uh, don't really know much of other Citron decks that I would really run in a tournament. There's some that run a little bit more beans and stuff like that, which are okay, but uh, I'm really just thinking A tier because. <laughs> <laughs> of how he literally carried the last stages of the tournament for me. Countertron, guys. And that's it. Grass Knuckles is one of the strongest, if not the most powerful um, uh, plant here in the game. I would say Captain Combustible might be a little bit more in terms of sheer power because he has so many cards that buff. Um, and repeat loss combos and all that, but I would say Grass Knuckles is probably the bread and butter most reliable plant hero, period. Very easy to play. You start off with Guardian Package, and in the late game, you have your bonus attacks. You have time to shine in here, which, you know, makes any card that ends up being big, it just automatically deletes opponents. The best finishers, probably, in PvZ Heroes uh, are owned by Grass Knuckles. Um, and Gatling P, Click P, there's just so many strong things uh, in the Mega Grown Guardian classes that work together really, really well. Uh, Grass Knuckles definitely <clears throat> should be a trend setting. He's able to deal with Gravestones well. He's really, Grass Knuckles, in terms of a fast tempo aggro hero, uh, has no holes in his game and is absolutely fantastic and is definitely going to be an S tier. Next is going to be Nightcap. Nightcap, I probably put him like really, really high because of Cycle Cap back in the olden days. I would say Cycle Cap is probably the Nightcap deck. That's, of course, where you put Astro Shroom and a Planet of the Grapes, and you keep on spamming all the cards, and it keeps on drawing and stuff like this. This does wreck me sometimes when I'm playing in rank, but at the end of the day, Cycle Cap has definitely fallen off because uh, at the end of the day, um, people know how to play around it. If you know how to play around Cycle Cap and make Cycle Cap 10% uh, of <laughs> what it is when people don't play around it, it also relies very, very heavily on Planet of the Grapes. Again, we have like Pine Clone Brainana, which again relies very heavily on Pine Clone. It's a strong deck, but it's not all there. Uh, I would put either Nightcap in low C or high D tier. Would I be more likely to run this in a tournament than uh, really uh, at the end of the day? I'm being very, very harsh. Very, very harsh on putting Nightcap in D tier. I admit, this is, again, great hero. Probably would never would never really choose this if I have to win a game, though. Uh, next is going to be Rose. Rose is disgusting. First of all, controls the, in terms of just sheer raw, what you can do, the best class, um, Solar. And then it's complemented so freaking well by the... Uh, Smarty class. Of course, we ran Midrose in the tournament. You can also go Midrose Heal that involves Pepper MD. She doesn't have a healing superpower, but, you know, between Little Buddy and Ketchup Mechanic and Allosaurus and a Taco or two, she definitely can pull off the heals. The cool thing about Rose is that she can ramp to Brainana and ramp to Dragon, ramp to things that are just absolutely stuffing your opponents. In terms of... Um, her superpower is also just to be able to have so many quick answers in Transmogrify and Godify that if they establish a big threat, it just it's it just gone. I mean, they spend six on a card and it's removed basically with a one-cost card. Uh, it makes her re really, really good. The superpower is really good part of her kit. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily run Freeze, but Freeze, again, it's a tempo card and it will... Um, it will, uh, it'll draw you a card, Weed Whack, very, very good superpowers. So, again, you want to be, uh, you don't have to be ramping. You can either be ramping or you can be healing in the early game. Cobb Cannon, Brainana, Dragon, Shrinking Violet, anything you want. Anything you want to do in the, in the game, Rose can do, and she's going to be an S tier. Definitely a meta, uh, defining champion that can counter 
I mean, anything. Any If you're teleporting, if you're going fast, she can heal against you and win. If you're going slow and you're making late-game plays, she can either remove the late-game plays efficiently with her superpowers and cop cannon, or if you're teleporting things in, she brinanas you and dragons you and you die. Uh, and that's why Rose is going in S tier. Captain Combustible is a really, really powerful hero um, that has a couple of holes in his game. I think at the end stage of the tournament, I was actually banning... Grass Knuckles and Captain Combustible, because no one was playing Rosewell. Um, probably right now, these would be my bans. I think I'm going to be putting Captain Combustible in A tier. Very, very powerful, super powerful finishers. Just stick a repeat moss <laughs> in the deck and use your superpowers, and you can win very well. I think some people would argue this would be S tier. I think if you really, really know how to play Captain Combustible, it'll probably be higher. But I'll put him competitively in A. Probably the most banned hero, actually, in the, in the tournament I played a few years ago. Um, I'm going to say Captain Combustible is in A tier. Uh, he controls, again, a lot of really, really fast with the Mega Grow and then finishing off with Repeat Moss. Uh, very good hero. Yep, Grass Knuckles, Nest, Captain Combustible in A, especially because Grass Knuckles can deal with Gravestones and Captain Combustible cannot. Uh, is definitely one of the reasons for affecting that decision is that it really is a hole in Captain Combustible's game that he cannot deal with Gravestones at all. Especially for a hero that is going fast and really needs to put reliably every turn, put significant damage to face. Not having an answer to gravestones is devastating because then they just stick a gravestone on the board and you can't get through it. Next, Beta Caratina. Beta Caratina, I'm going to be putting in D tier. Now, even though she's exactly the same classes as Citron, uh, her superpowers are super uh, inferior to Citron's. I mean, just comparing the ultimate abilities, this is one of the worst superpowers in the game, and compared to Citron's, which is Peel Shield, which in terms of tempo is a, a game-winning card, one of the better superpowers in the game. Um, I, I, she's really no ever reason ever, ever, ever to run Beta Caratina over Citron. I happen to enjoy playing Counter Tron with Beta Caratina because she has like a lot of RNG light speed seed and kind of just mixes it up in a little bit more of a fun way. But then today, if you need a win, Beta Caratina is not that. That was the plant heroes. Let's move on to the zombie heroes. We'll be starting with Super Brains, and Super Brains is actually going in D tier for the simple reason that. Uh, he is worse in every way than Huge Giganticus because his superpowers controls the exact same two classes, but his superpowers are worse. Um, people ask me all the time, when would you run, when would you actually run Super Brains um, over Huge Giganticus? Maybe a, a deck that was blob-centric and didn't need all the teleports and... Uh, you know, maybe something you just really need a quick bonus attack, and that is, like, so important to have this extra superpower that does a, you know, a bonus attack. If the, if that's the case, then, you know, maybe Super Brains would be good in that situation, but typically, uh, typically in almost 99 out of 100 cases, huge against is going to be better, and that's why you're going in D tier. Smash! I did actually run the Smash in the tournament. Um, he does have a very niche ability of being able to deal very well with the Guardian class, if that's the meta. He does have, like, Black Hole and Hunting Grounds, and, you know, I even ran, like, Mop Package because people are running a lot of Guardian in the tournament. At the end of the day, though, realistically, Smash is in D tier uh, because he really doesn't have a lot of competitive uses. The uh, two classes he r runs, first of all, are the two weakest classes, I would say, hands down on the zombie side. Uh, and being uh, hardy and uh, beastly, they do obviously have some uh, good. There's good decks with smash, like counter smash and stuff like that. But there's if you're trying to do guard, if you're trying to do, I'll tell you why. If you're trying to do beastly, first of all, beastly is very good at controlling the early game with your cheese cutters and your uh, cyborgs, and you know, so kind of like really shutting down your nibbles and extinction events, really shutting down the early game. You don't have any finishers in the smash in either of these classes. There, there's, Smash really just doesn't have access to finishers. What is the late game Smash card? It's going viral, but there's a million heroes that do going viral and do teacher uh, and do the beastly things better than the Smash does. If you want to really go teacher, then go Z-Mech. Uh, it's a way better option because the crazy class is going to, uh, and his superpowers are going to advance you much more. Smash does have a very good superpower here. Pretty decent. This is like the worst, and this is just okay. I love Galvanize, and Smash is obviously probably one of the best superpowers in the game. 
Uh, but unfortunately, it smashes the hero because of his lack of synergy, lack of finishers, and does everything these two classes do. Probably the worst at them. Uh, he's going in D tier. Next is going to be Infinity. Infinity, obviously, is going to be going in S tier. It's probably a hero I've changed my opinion about. <laughs> One of the most over the last few years. Um, Infinity is a super aggressive hero. There's two ways to play Infinity. Two really, really strong Infinity decks. One is to play Pirates, which is my preference, and you have Con Man and uh, Grave Robber. And then you have your Pirates, and you can put Cowboy and Sugary Treats in order to give them extra attack. Fruitcake, you know, the crazy class and the sneaky class just work really, really well together. The other way is just to go aggro, uh, and you can do Con Man, everything from Line Dancing Zombie to Cowboy to... Uh, uh, to Disco Dance Floor, and just a lot of really good aggressive options. Superpower is also pretty good at aggroing opponents in terms of brute strength, and if you start off with Triple Threat on turn one, uh, <laughs> really, really, really good. Uh, and Crypt is a bad superpower, and then Super Stench is one of the best in the game. So uh, really, really good superpowers, really t controls arguably the two best classes on the, on the the on the zombie side, and they also work very well together. Rust Bolt! Oh, where am I going to put Rust Bolt? Rust Bolt has actually, right now that I'm recording this in May of 2024, is the, is the ranked meta. Everyone runs Rust Bolt these days. He's very, very interesting in terms of a control, sort of controlling with the Guardian, with the, uh, sorry, with the uh, Hardy class. Maybe establishing teachers and paparazzis that work together. It's one thing that only Rust Bowl can do. And then finishing off with your late game uh, brainy cards like Trickster, uh, Viking, Kitchen Sink, whatever you fancy as a finisher. Um, Rust Bowl is... Rust Bowl... I'll tell you the thing about Rust Bowl. Rust Bowl probably the, the best late game finishers in the game on the zombie side probably are the, the brainy. The fact that you can teleport things in and you have Trickster there do make that good. And then the 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 Guardian, the, the, the Hardy in the early game, having Rolling Stones, they're very efficient. Having Rolling Stone and Weed Spray uh, in terms of small removal, you have your small removal in terms of the... Uh, in terms of the hardy, and then you have the big removal with your rocket science. It really covers, you know, having answers efficiently to everything. Rust, that's the reason Rust Bolt's very annoying to go against, because he has a lot of really, really efficient answers. Even Rolling Stone can take out strong three, four, five cost cards if you're going against, you know, in the right matchup. Rust Bolt is always going to have a place in the meta. He's never going to be the strongest hero, but he's always going to be someone that you can use to counterpick and can really mess up um, a lot of different strategies in the game. He's definitely not S tier. He's either going in in A or B. Do I have to give him A? I didn't even touch Rust Bolt competitively in the tournament. He's either a low A or high B. Just trying to look at the other heroes I would be putting even in A tier here. Oh. Uh, all right, he's going in B. Because at the end of the day, I do think that the Hardy stuff is done better by z and the Brainy stuff is done better by Brainstorm and Morticia. And his superpowers are actually really, really garbage. Uh, you know what? This really decides it for me. He could have been in A, but because his superpowers are such hot trash, they're the most unreal. This is the worst one. And then this is the one that if you start off with this in your hand, you are on a losing path already from turn one because this cannot be played until late in the game. It's so bad starting off a cut down to size. This is just a middle of the road average in terms of, you know, superpowers minus three draw a card. It can be very good with a rolling stone. And then Rockwall, again, if you have a heavy tempo deck and you have a paparazzi and it saves it, it's great. But this is really one of the weaker, less useful superpowers in the game because it really it really needs one of your cards to be not in terms of even like it needs to be subject a card that they want to remove the remove with a damaging trick not even a hard removal trick or like a minion and then this will protect it it's it's actually pretty circumstantial that rockwell is that good yeah his superpowers are gonna i maybe would put him a concern a but his superpowers actually suck and you will lose games even with a really good Rust Bowl deck, you will lose games because of how bad his superpowers are, and I'm putting him in B tier. Just there's reliability. Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo, if you would have asked me, like, <laughs> a couple months ago, I probably would have put him down in D. 
We've recently found one electric boogaloo deck that, uh, on God, I would probably run in a tournament right now, and it is the Binary Stars Flamenco deck. It is not a meme. It is the real deal. I play it in ranked. It is so devastating. If you don't know this one deck that Boogaloo has, Binary Flamenco Boogaloo, man, it's it's awesome. It, it does. It has one of the best finishers in the game. The early game, I've even been refining it since I did that deck, uh, running Barrel and uh, Barrel of Deadbeards and uh, Final Mission. It's it's really, really, really good. It's the real deal. That one deck probably for me puts them up two tiers. I'm putting Boogaloo in B tier because I haven't ever tested him in a real competitive environment. He does have two very good superpowers too. He has a really bad one, and then this one is actually good with Boogaloo. It's terrible with the Morticia, but with Boogaloo, since he has Bungie Plumber and Barrel and some little ways of doing damage, this is just okay. Below average, but fine. Yep, he's got the 2-3 damage superpowers, too. He's got really, really good. It's one of the things that make him very good. I, again, I, I'm on a whim, on a whim because of literally one deck we found with him lately, and I think that the competitiveness of that deck is actually the real freaking deal i'm putting him in b tier for that one deck otherwise he's down in d again there are some good ones you play counter boogaloo but at the end of the day that's what i'm doing brain freeze <clears throat> brain freeze carried me in the tournament it, it's funny because he's a weaker here the, the deck you want to do with brain freeze is lock in uh, which was my take on the Discord deck, Lockout. Also a strong deck in its own right. Played a little bit differently. Um, Brain Freeze has a really cool thing he does, is that in the early game, he's able to devastate really lockdown with Cheese Cutter, Dog Walker, if you need it, if you're facing a lot of cards on turn one that really need to get removed, like Haunted Pumpkin did that. Then he has, like, Cyborg and Nibble and Extinction Event. He has this really strong early game that goes into a very good late, uh, you know, mid to late game, which is Pogo, Mug, Yeti. Um, and that's what I used with him in the tournament. He has two. He's not a strong hero. His superpowers suck for the most part. They're really, really weak. You know, really unreliable. Dolphinado, Acid Rain, one of the worst superpowers in the game. Galvanize is fine, and this is eh. You know what I mean? This is very, very circ circumstantial. Um, at the end of the day, though, because of that deck, he, he and in fact, his classes work very, very well together, he's got to be up here. I mean, he literally, in the finals, this was my hero. This was my go-to, man. Brain Freeze is underrated, man. He doesn't have a lot of good decks, but when you know exactly what to do with him, again, look up Tournament Brain Freeze. Fry him up. Just Google that if you want to see the deck. I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in oh man <laughs> I'm gonna put him in B I, I think the reason why he was that good for me in the tournament was because of everyone was running Haunted Pumpkin into me for some reason because they thought I was well, it's a whole calculation why I'm putting him in B. He has one really, really solid deck. Is it the best mid deck? Does he do anything really better than Infinity? Not really. <laughs> uh, the Beastly class definitely makes him go down a notch. All right. I'm going in B. I know there's a very big gap here for C tier. <laughs> you know what? Someone's going to have to end up in C tier. I'll probably end up shoving things into C tier later. <laughs> Stay tuned for the final tier list. I'm trying to even think which of these heroes would end up in C tier. End of the day, everything Brain Freeze does, Neptuno probably does better. All right, here's what we're doing. Boogle is going here, and Brain Freeze is also going here. Solar Flare is a beast. Solar Flare is the opposite. Her superpowers will carry, especially her ultimate, will carry you. You automatically win when you get it. <laughs> Brain Freeze and Boogaloo have these ones where you automatically lose. Alright, fine. This is what I'm going with. Next, we're going to go Brainstorm. Brainstorm, I probably put in S tier back in the day. Um, Brainstorm, what happened in the tournament? Brainstorm is a very strong hero. Val Trickster hybrid. I mean, come on. But, uh... Brainstorm is a hero that is easy to counter. The counters, of course, are uh, the whole Guardian class. It's Forget-Me-Nuts, 
and Triceratops, and I guess you know for you know uh, Black IP Brain Nana, uh, a very easily counterable hero, uh, but also probably the most powerful hero in the game has access to again Valkyrie with bonus attacks is ridiculous Trickster. Uh, even like the science decks for Brainstorm might have a, a niche, niche use, uh, which were very, very powerful. The Crazy Scientist deck. <coughs> uh, Brainstorm is not going to be making S tier this time. I use this a lot in the tournament. Honestly, Brainstorm never, never did me wrong if people didn't didn't automatically see it coming, man. I honestly wish I had used more Brainstorm in the finals. And use that to counter Haunted Pumpkin rather than Brain Freeze. This is tough. I'm going to put Brainstorm in A because I think that is Brainstorm is, at, is, is actually the most, in terms of raw power, the most powerful zombie hero. Nothing is more powerful than a 20 attack Valk. And it's not that hard to get. Or a Trickster, man. Um, but kind of easy to counter, so it has gaps in the game. I would say almost like Captain Combustible put in the same tier. I think these two are actually very similar. Super high power uh, and but counterable. You know? And that's why they're not going to be in S tier. Next we're going to go with Immortitia. Man, Immortitia is a beast. Almost wish I had used her more in the tournament. Uh, teleport Zombot. Teleport even Variety. Teleport Trickster. Teleport um you know, Mechasaur, she has the very good early game Beastly. Beastly is an early game control class. I know that's a, like a weird thing. It looks like a tempo class. But the best thing Beastly does is she's got their Extinction Event and Cyborg. Uh, with the late game, again, best late game class is uh, going to be Teleporting and Tricksters. You also have, again, Zombot in here. And Garg throwing Garg if you want. Immortitia is good. I I'm almost considering like low A tier, high B tier. Immortitia's got to be better than Rust Bowl, right? I'm not putting it in an S because it's just not in the same league as Infinity Rose and Grass Knuckles. Really, really not. Again, great, great deck, great hero. More counterable, more slow, not as winning efficiently. <sighs> A lot of people in the chat want us to be in an S. It's definitely not going in S. How good is this teleport zombie? It's really, really good. Really, 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 really good. Does Immortitia do anything that Brainstorm does? Does she do it better than Brainstorm? Are there any removal cards that Immortitia has that Brainstorm can't? I don't really know what the reason to run instead of teleport Valk, teleport Trickster. Why would you run teleport Zombot instead of that? It's just a slower version of it. It's either low A, high B. There's also the science decks. Actually, Morticia is the best science hero. Almost wish I had tested that really competitively, the uh, Area 22. She does have Area 22. You're not necessarily getting as much as out of that with the Morticia as you are uh, with other beastly heroes. I'm putting her in B tier. Screw it. You know what? I don't think that she's actually, and I barely even touched her competitively in the tournament, I don't think she's actually as good as these A-tier ones. I think she's more of a very powerful but niche because the things that she does in terms of controlling it until the late game and doing finishers, I think she just doesn't do that as well as Brainstorm does. And that's final. Next, we're going to do Z-Mech. Z-Mech is, uh, first of all, his superpowers are pretty awesome. I love Missile Madness. <laughs> Might be the best superpower in the game. Also, three damage and then blocking and adding, adding stats. Um, Zemac is the best hero in terms of the early game and really uh, for the uh, hardy class. Besides for the teacher and genetic experiments and middle managers that are very, very strong one drops, you also are complemented with other strong early game cards like uh, Con Man and Fruitcake. Um, uh, Quasar works very well with Teacher. Uh, Trick Mech, I would say, definitely is the way to go with Z Mech. There's also Garg Mech, but that was really easy to. <laughs> I loved it when people ran Garg Mech against me at the tournament. That was fun. Uh, 
I say Trick Mech is the way to go. It does have some holes in this game, but it's very powerful. I would say in terms of a strong early game tempo hero, Z-Mech actually does it better than any other zombie hero. And for that reason, I'm putting him in A tier because he really is very, very strong and fills the niche of an aggro uh, hero very, very well. Neptuna is strong. Neptuna is like brain freeze on steroids. The early game is like... The thing I was doing doing competitively for the really competitive Neptuna deck is going to be Black Hole, Rolling Stones, Excavators in the early game even can run, even Landscaper, and then Pogo, Yeti, Mug. Uh, Pogo, Yeti, Mug these days in ranked is very uh, lacking because everyone runs Guardian and Blockbuster. <laughs> That's the reason why the heroes will maybe like Brain Freeze and Neptuna... Right now, I'm going to be putting them a little bit lower because they're really relying on Pogo Yeti Mug and people know how to counter it. They're almost like... Pogo Yeti Mug is like the new cycle cap, is that once people not only know how to counter it, but are building their decks to counter it, it becomes a lot worse. Uh, Neptuna did a lot of great things for me, though. Um, the going virals on top of Pogo Yeti Mug is also devastating. She's either in low B, high C tier... I think I'm going to put her in B because she definitely fills a niche in terms of having the Guardian that's really, the Hardy that's really good against Guardian and then the Sneaky that's good against other things. All right, where are we going to put Hugh Giganticus competitively? I'd say the most competitive deck for Hugh Giganticus is Tell Imps um, with Blob as a finisher. That's a really, really good deck and was a huge trendsetter setter in the tournament. Really, really good against the Guardian class, because Deadly Imps, I mean, if you run that into Grass Knuckles, you're going to win. If you run into Rose, you're going to lose, because she can bring Anna, the Blob plays, and she can Shrinking Violet, everything else you do. Um, niche, very, very strong. He Giganticus also just wins games straight up. It's definitely not going in D tier. Uh, wins game straight up because of superpowers. I mean, his superpowers are the best in the game. If you took a super a hero that has four amazing, amazing superpowers, he gigantic is basically the only one that has that. Uh, he has environments in his superpowers, so you don't have to run them in your deck, which gives you more freedom in terms of your deck building. If you get HG superpower on turn one, it's again, it's just like game over. But any of them in your starting hand, even the teleportation station, it's like that's the worst one, and it's really, really good. It's an environment that just draws you cards. Awesome. Um, I don't think I can put it in S, but I'm gonna put it in A, especially because Tellums, man, a really, really highly competitive hero, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there's even, I'm guessing there is even a better deck than Tell Imps with Blob as a finisher. There's a better deck, Huge Giganticus, that we as a community have not even discovered yet. Uh, unlimited potential here with Huge Giganticus. Um, he doesn't work very well with his late game brainy cards because he doesn't have very good early game control. That's probably the biggest gap in his game is that he's not really good at, you know, not an expert early game control tell him sort of does teleporting in deadly imps does uh and imp throwing imp does sort of fill that vo void he has but he's still not as good at brainstorm as controlling early games we're just really not it's just objectively not better <laughs> uh, than heroes that have bungee plumbers and barrel mission and all that stuff all right that's going to be it. And that's final controversy over here in the tier list. I think I, I, I'm really looking back at this. I'm looking at the ones I would never use, the ones that have small niche, the more powerful, the extremely powerful, and the fucking gods. I, I actually am very, very happy with how this turned out. In retrospect, hope you guys enjoyed. That was the uh, hero tier list. PZ heroes, let me know uh, respectfully and civilly down in the comment section below where you think I completely dropped the ball on this tier list. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining Please me. Rank Peace, this is Fry. Please rank them within their tiers. All right, fine. It's really hard to compare plants and zombies. But if I had to, it's going to be Trendsetter... Who would I want more? I think Grass Knuckles beats Rose. I think he just has... I think he's just more, like... He's harder to deal with than... He's hard... He's... Grass Knuckles sets the tempo of a game better than Rose does. This is really hard. 
All right. In terms of this tier, I'm probably going to go like Citron, my boy Citron first. Um, personally, like Zemex second, Zemex second, Brainstorm third, <sighs> Captain fourth. E. Giganticus will be at the end. What do I like better, Walnut or Chomp? I'm going to go Chomp over Walnut. Let's just leave it like that. I think Solar Flare will be at the end, and Morticia will be at the beginning. I think it'll be like this for me. Okay, we'll include this in the video. For me, it's like this. For me, it's probably Brain Freeze first, because I think that one deck he has is actually really good. And, okay, so I would say of these ones, the ones I would use in tournament, first of all, would be Smash, because I do. I'd say Green Shadow, probably second. It's hard ever to justify Super Brains, man. Beta's probably last. I'd say Nightcap is next. Spidow ever? Alright, Spidow, Super Brains, Beta. There. They're in order now, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Now it's the end of the video. Bye. <laughs>